Welcome to Ford Racing 3. Hello, HG Central. I am Max, otherwise known as Test Drive on various different parts of the internet. And welcome to my first series here on the HG Central channel. Uh, a lot of you may recognize me, or some of you maybe. I don't really know. Yeah, I used to do a lot of Let's Plays on my own channel, known as Test Drive 426, uh, if you may have seen it around. I just kind of got tired of doing it every other day, and so I just kind of stopped doing videos on there. But then I decided that I wanted to keep doing it, but not at, to the extent of what I was doing at, which was two videos a day or three videos a day even, sometimes. And so now I'm here, because my good friend Thunder uh, let me, or is letting me use his channel, I guess, to share my Let's Play videos that I want to do. So, if you haven't realized, uh, we were playing Ford Racing 3 for the original Xbox on... Yeah. And a few things before I get into anything, of course. Uh, here in the main menu, it does have Xbox Live support. You can change your profile, go to the options, which are very simple. Make sure that the, the game has on widescreen. This is one of the reasons why I'm playing this on Xbox instead of PC. Because the PC version does not support widescreen, oddly enough, even though the original Xbox version, and I think the PS2 version does too. I can't say, though, because I've never actually played the game on PS2. But, yeah, very simple, uh... Simple menus. We're going to turn the volume down on the music, just because of copyrights. But yeah, I've been... I, I had a kind of a hard time deciding on what I wanted to play, so... I ended up just playing this, because it's a short game, or a fairly short game and whatnot. So here in the main race menu, you have five di or three different areas you can compete in. For competition, which is basically a career mode, which is the mode I'm going to do first. As you can tell, you just continue, you go through all of these uh, different events till you get to the very end, and voila, you win the game. You have Ford Challenge, which is, as it says there, you can collect vehicles, tracks, and race types. Basically, it's the same as career, but you only use one car and you only do like one race or whatever it still towards uh, counts towards the game prog it still counts towards the game progress but it's not quite as in-depth as a career and then Ford collection which is simply enough just what you've unlocked in the game so you can use the cars you've unlocked tracks you've unlocked all that kind of stuff so as I said we're going to start out with the Ford competition and head on through it first off and our first thing here is going to be movie car chases which we unlock a 49 Ford Coupe Ford, or Ford Capri Mark 1 livery pack and competition cup which I think is the uh, the prize or the uh, the trophy for this series so we have one car to pick from the 68 Ford Mustang a lot of these are actually movie cars they're kind of references to movies or TV shows or whatever especially these older ones like the 75 Torino 71 Mach 1 Mustang, or 73 Mustang Mach 1, and some various other ones too you might uh, recognize from movies. 68 Mustang I think is supposed to be a homage to Bullet, but you can't select the green color, which is kind of odd. So, yeah. Before you start all the races, you get these little, or before you, yeah, I guess before you start each race in a series, it gives you this little cutscene where it just kind of shows what's going on, has a nice little uh, background to it, all that kind of stuff. And I don't think my controls are right. Oh well, we're just we're gonna roll with it the way it is. Three, two, so, yep, X is shift up, uh, A is shift down. But yeah, this game, it, the graphics are actually pretty decent on it for being a game, uh, a very a fairly low budget game. Even though this is the third game in the series for behind Ford Racing One and Two. Um, I don't think they sold incredibly well. They weren't like a triple-A game, of course. But they're still pretty good, fun games to uh, play. And I've enjoyed them a lot ever since I got the first... Or I got Ford Racing 2 first back in like 2003, 2004, something like that. Back when I first originally got my original Xbox. Also, another thing is that I started gaming on the original Xbox, which is why I am choosing to play this on the original Xbox. And... I'm a pretty big fan of the original Xbox as well. I have a PS2, of course, and a PS3, and a PS1, and many other consoles. But, yeah, the, the original Xbox will always hold a, a huge place in my heart due to the fact that it was, like, the first console I ever had, or first 
Well, besides some uh, pretty simple PC games, like pretty low-budget PC games, for uh, the original Xbox, and probably Project Gotham Racing 2 or Rise of War Challenge 2 were like my first real experiences with AAA gaming, or at least in the racing game, cent or, uh, racing game scene. Because I never really was a big... I, I didn't really play anything other than racing games besides a deer hunting game on my PC until I got my Xbox 360. Which was a few years after I got this. Even though I did have a few games for this, like Blinks, Time Sweeper, uh, Tac 2, some other just random games that I never took out of the cases at all. So, yeah. These, fair, uh, these early races are fairly easy. I think the game puts you up uh, difficulty the further you go through it. I can't actually remember. It's been a long time since I've played through the game, this game from the beginning. And of course you do have your different uh, camera modes, which I like on this, these games is the gauges. Whenever you go into bumper cam, they are kind of like uh, Forza Motorsport 1 and 2 did this as well, where the gauges become like, they, they go across the bottom instead of just staying in one corner like this, which is a nice feature. Plus it adds a full tachometer and a full speedometer. Although in this one, oddly enough, I don't, th yeah, in this one, in uh, Ford Racing 3, you don't get the gauges that look like the gauges or are supposed to be look like the era of gauges from the car that you're driving. I don't know why they took that out, but oh well, I guess it's not it's not a very uh, very game breaking deal or whatever or deal breaking change. And it's been a while since I've done one of these. It's, I'm realizing it's still hard to talk for more than five minutes. So I hope you guys will bear with me through these first couple episodes, get my bearings back, and then uh, then we'll be back to uh, how I was before. Because, you know, like I said, I did two videos per day for a couple months at the end. I, I kind of went... It, eh. it went back and forth. Also, I won. And you get points per race, of course. I unlocked a track called Mountain Drive, which is a track I just raced on. As you can tell, 10 points for first place, 6 for second, so on and so forth. And you do get top scores, which the game has like preset ones that you I guess it just wants you to beat. So, yeah. Autosave is also a nice feature. So we'll go ahead and go to the next round. You can view a replay, and you can save the game from this menu after race. But I won't worry about any of that for right now. And again, we get our little cutscene. Shows us what track we're racing on, how many laps. So, yeah. Also, the Ford GT race car, or uh, concept car was... Still a concept car in this game, even... Actually, no, that wasn't the concept car in this game. Yeah, in this game you can actually... You can shift up before the timer hits go. On Ford Racing 2, you could only shift after the timer hit go. Which I kind of like because it was kind of a challenge to get it right. But, yeah, in this game it kind of gives you a lot more. Because as you, as you may have noticed, if you keep the RPMs, like... In between, like... Like on this car, being between 4,000 and 5,000 RPMs. Also, there's... Uh, kind of off-road racing in normal races, which I always thought was interesting. Yet there's also off-road tracks, so it's kind of confusing. But anyways, if you get like in between the top or the in the top 1,000 RPMs on the tachometer as you launch from the start, no other times, it will give you a speed boost depending on like where it was, which they can range from going from zero to 50 in like two seconds, or not getting one at all, depending on how uh, how. I guess how well you shift, or how well you do the RPMs, I don't know. It's kind of a weird situation. Yeah, like I said, the races are very easy in the beginning. But I think they'll get harder, I think. I know I've beat the entire game, so I can 100% do it. And I did that when I was probably like 10 or 11, so... Yeah, we'll definitely get through the whole game. I just don't know, like, if there's going to be any curveballs along the way, difficulty-wise. This game has, like, one of the most interesting selections of cars I've seen in any game. Well, probably not any game, but for a manual... Well, there's not very many manufacturer-specific games. There's, like, these games, there's Corvette, which was a game I was contemplating actually playing instead of this game, but I ended up playing this game. There's an Alfa Romeo game for PS2, which I have. You know, I downloaded it on my PS3. And there's a few others I can't think of. 
But you go from anything from a literal, like, you can literally drive a Ford Model T in this game to the Ford GT, the, the production one from 2005. There was a huge difference in, like, just crazy cars. And then there's, like, NASCAR, Tauruses, and all kinds of crazy stuff. Ford Crown Victoria. How often do you see that in video games? Besides, like, Driver San Francisco and other games that have taxis, I guess. Even though still those games don't really have the Crown Vic specifically. They're either unlicensed cars or... Yeah, that's actually about it. It's a really interesting area of the map, or this track. I always hit the... <laughs> I always accidentally hit the sides and you fly up on one side because the invisible wall the invisible walls there are where the orange barricades are so you can get launched off of the dirt on the sides of the road sometimes it's entertaining sometimes it screws you over but yeah I like the fact that they actually included some kind of I guess it's not really rally racing but like some dirt off-road uh, parts portions of tracks in this game because in Ford Racing 2 you either had all pavement or tarmac or all uh all dirt well i guess not really because there were some off-road tracks but you couldn't take the normal cars on the off-road tracks because the game wouldn't let you so yeah also one thing about this game is that you'll hear a lot of recycled sounds from the cars there are a lot of cars that sound the same Finish. so we got in first place Difficulty is easy. Best lap, 147. Got another 10 points. Thunderbird, Mach 1, Mustang. I like how the 46 Ford Convertible was able to beat the 68 Mustang GT, which I think is actually what the bullet car was, now that I think about it, because there's two 68 Mustangs for some reason, and the Torino, which Torino, may, I don't know. The 46 Ford isn't very powerful. I've Trust me, I've driven them in real life. Well, I've driven older ones in real life. So I now have 20 points. Second place has 12. Yada, yada, yada. Hey, I got the high score on the uh, leaderboards amongst the FR3 times, which is the uh, developer, I guess, or whatever they set the preset times to be. So I think we have one more race to go. We'll see. It's on Harborside. I think I remember this track. Two laps, standard race. Pretty simple. Also, as we progress, as we progress through the, further through the game, oh yeah, it's this track, the the fall time track. I really like the the uh, the aesthetic of this track. Oh, what what? Oh, I'm pressing the B button instead of ah. The uh, the different controls from what I'm used to are messing me up. Yeah, they have a nice variety of different like sceneries of the tracks in this game, which is something I really like. Like you have this fall time track that's like in kind of, I guess it's. New England, Maine, maybe something like that in the fall time. It's very nice. Uh, and then you have snowy tracks and you have really, really green tracks like the one I just drove on, stuff like that. Also, another thing, if you may notice on the, at the beginning of the race, there was a shortcut off to the right. And there are actually m d multiple different shortcuts on multiple different tracks in this game. I sometimes use them, sometimes don't. I've kind of gotten to learn like which ones are actually faster and which ones are just like there to mess with you. Yeah. Colonial Highway. Yeah, that makes sense. Maine. Probably like, well, actually more like Virginia or something. I don't know. Gonna jump over the train track. Oh, no, that's not a train track. That's an actual road. And you may notice it actually gives you like high scores, I guess, for each thing that you do. Like now I'm getting a drifting score for 405 feet. And they don't really go towards anything whatsoever. Like, you don't get money from them or anything. And then there's a shortcut. It's just... It's it's not even worth it, in my opinion. Because you have to slow down so much to actually make the turn. But yeah, the, the high score thing, I don't really... I guess... I don't know. I guess it's just a thing like... Hey, I got this score on this track for drifting or whatever to tell your friends. Or maybe it had something to do with Xbox Live whenever it was up. I have no clue. But... Definitely a very interesting... Uh, Little 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 thing. I also find it kind of funny that in Ford Racing 2, all the cars had their headlights on all the time. On every track, no matter if it was nighttime or daytime, they always had their headlights on. In this game, they don't. They only have them on when it's nighttime out in the whatever track. 
But it always seems like taillights are still on. Like you can kind of see them lining up there. Some cars is worse than others. I think it's mostly the cars that they ported over from Ford Racing 2, such as this car. But, yeah. And there's no really real, like, weather effects in this game. There's just day and night on different tracks. I think on one or two of them, there's some snow, but it doesn't really do anything or affect anything. But there we go. There's the end of that race, and I think that was the last race. My best lap was a 112. Got 10 more points. The 46 Ford is... Oh. He's not quite in last. The Chirino's in last. He got one point. Congratulations. Anyways, that was a sweep. For me. Hey, I didn't win the uh, leaderboards. Darn it. Alrighty, so that is the last race. You can tell first place in movie car chases. Which, as I mentioned, the whole movie car is saying. Then you get some points here. They are just preset points for uh, different places, or placing in different, or uh, placing in third, second, or first, and the whole entire thing. I unlocked the 49 Ford Coupe, or actually 49 Mercury Coupe, because the 49 Ford Coupe does not look like that. Um, the 70 Ford Capri Mark I, which is a definitely an interesting car. I've never actually seen one in person, I don't think. I unlocked a livery pack for it, which is basically just colors. Yeah, the cup collected is the uh, the trophy too. I unlocked the off-road rumblings competition and the classic competition. And the announcer gets very annoying in this game, just to let you know. But I'm gonna keep her on because, yeah, she's she's part of the game. So that will conclude this first episode of Ford Racing Three. So we will come back in the next episode with one of these two. I'm not really sure which one yet. But definitely uh, be back soon. So thank you all for watching, and I'm out of here. See ya!